What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we are talking about Amazon's autonomous strategy. That's right. I think Amazon has an internal effort going on to build a self-driving car. This is a huge, high-priority uh, mission inside the company. Amazon operates one of the largest fleets of delivery vans and huge commercial trucks um, in the world and is growing rapidly as the backbone of our online economy. Amazon is one of the world leaders in logistics, but their current logistic network has two huge issues. The one is that it uses cars that run on fossil fuels, everything in their network pretty much that delivers you packages is burning fossil fuels based on a legacy technology we all know is going away. The second big problem, none of these cars or vans are driving themselves. This is two huge challenges Amazon is looking to tackle um, to make their deliveries safer, more efficient, more sustainable, and most importantly, way cheaper. We know all, we know Amazon is all about cutting costs. Their shipping costs have been ballooning. As of 2019, they spent about $39 billion on shipping and only increasing. So this is a $39 billion you know, problem that's happening within Amazon or friction. Uh, where they are going to be looking to reduce costs. But this problem is also a massive opportunity because Amazon, from a first principles basis, has the one thing that is needed to uh, accomplish or have a you know shot at doing a self-driving car, and that is an existing business to subsidize data collection. Now, Apple recently was in the news um, for their electric car plans, You know, the leaking Apple electric car. To me, that never made sense because if Apple's going to launch an electric car in a few years, autonomy has to be a key foundational pillar of the strategy. And to have a solid autonomous strategy, you have to have hundreds of thousands thousands or at least 100,000 cars on the road with sensors collecting data. We're driving billions of miles to train your neural network. And there's no way you're gonna be able to spend all the money to do that just step by step with brute force with your internal capabilities. That's why even Google has struggled doing that with Waymo. You need an existing business to subsidize that data collection process. And so this is why Tesla has had such a strong leadership position and is by far the leading company um, in autonomy right now is because they have a million Teslas on the road driving around and they're about to sell another, you know, almost million this year equipped with all of these cameras all of these sensors um, driving that with an over-the-air software connection so it can, you know, every time you're driving on autopilot and you disengage, you're sending data back to Tesla to improve their self-driving al algorithm. Tesla recently unveiled their FSD program, full self-driving beta program. I'm still praying that I can get on the list. Um, basically, this program where they're letting some, you know, a handful of a couple hundred customers test out this fully self-driving software, basically plug in an address and your car just takes you there. Pretty epic that that's happening. Um, and the way Tesla's doing it is putting that experiment in the wild and letting people get better at it, pushing out updates, you know, watching what these early customers do, learning from them, have these early customers train the neural net and they're pumped to do it and give Tesla extremely valuable data to actually make this self-driving car project a reality. So up until this point, Tesla's really been the only company with this sort of data flywheel here. I mean, I paid Tesla for my Model Y. I paid them eight grand for my full self-driving software. So they're already making money on me. And now I'm driving them uh, their car around, giving them free data. So Tesla actually gets paid to collect data. This was the huge friction why Waymo isn't really taking off, struggling. Google's let, kind of divesting from Waymo, letting it take on outside capital. That doesn't really make much sense because Google, the world's leading AI company, you know, this incredible AI project to build a self-driving car. Why would they be divesting from it? Why is it stalling? Why isn't it taking off? Because it doesn't have the same flywheel as Google's search business, where they literally get paid to get more data and get their neural net trained because every time you type a search into Google, you're training it and they're getting paid from ads. So that also has an existing business to subsidize data collection. And so Amazon here is in a very interesting position because their shipping business, which uh, was a $39 billion cost last year with tens of thousands, uh, you know, as of 2019, late 2019, Amazon had about 30,000 delivery vans on the road and 20,000 commercial trucks. So you can see that Amazon's fleet is actually growing to the size where if they slap sensors on these cars, then they actually might have a shot at starting to collect, you know, hundreds of millions of miles, soon to be billions of miles of data and develop their own self-driving system in-house. This is exactly what I think they're doing. And if you look at the moves Amazon been making, they've been putting down all the puzzle pieces to actually make this happen. Um, so this all started, uh, I kind of got scheming on this really, really uh, in February of 2019 when Amazon led around for Rivian. This really caught my eye. Rivian, an electric vehicle truck startup that I've actually visited in Detroit. Um, really cool company with this idea of, you know, electric adventure vehicles, these more rugged sort of off-road electric trucks uh, built for going off-road and kind of exploring and adventuring. Really cool niche and company got a ton of buzz. And then Amazon was a huge investor in the, in February uh, 2019, this investing round, they led a $700 million round. It looked like they, uh, when it's all said and done, it looked like they invested about 400 million of that into the company. And then September, 2019, Jeff Bezos lets it slip just six months after the investment that he's actually ordered a hundred thousand custom delivery vans, the largest delivery van order ever from Rivian. So all of these delivery vans that are driving around our neighborhoods right now, Amazon wants to make those all electric and wants to have them be built by Rivian. And so 
That was one piece of the puzzle piece, which I thought was really interesting. Why are you partnering with Rivian, a company who's never built a car, who doesn't have great battery tech, instead of partnering with Tesla to buy 100,000 cars from them, has the best battery tech, has actually built and delivered a million EVs, but no, they decided to go with Rivian. So even more interesting than that, and while Rivian's been pushing forward, they've actually unveiled an almost working version of this delivery van, which is slated to come out in the next year or so. So that looks like it's all moving forward, although they haven't really said how autonomous it's going to be. It's just going to be an electric delivery van. Amazon's also been making a bunch of moves in the autonomous startup space. Um, they invested in a company called Aurora Innovations about a year and a half ago. Uh, they're a self-driving tech startup that's really just focused on the sensors and getting the technology down uh, to, for cars to drive themselves. They slap their sensors on these you know, cars that are built, built by third parties and get them to drive themselves. They haven't really done anything commercially, still in the R&D phase. Although really recently in December, they've actually, this Aurora Innovation Company bought the autonomous vehicle group from Uber, Uber's Advanced Technologies Group, which is Uber's self-driving unit. And now that Uber sold that, you're like, okay, well, they have no chance at the future because we all know it's going robo taxi. But um, Uber sold that unit to Aurora, who's now is developing that self driving tech and says they'll eventually sell it to Uber later. But anyway, so Amazon's got their hand in this Aurora company as well. Even more interesting than that is a company called Zooks. Zooks made a huge splash on the scene as one of those self driving car startups worth billions of dollars. We had no idea what they did. And they raised 500 million bucks at a $3.2 billion valuation um, in July 2018. And then we didn't hear much about them. They kind of fizzled. They didn't execute as fast as they wanted. They did some layoffs. Unclear what was happening with Zooks. And then out of nowhere, in June of 2020, Amazon buys them for $1.2 billion. So just 33% or so, or 40% of what they were worth two years ago. So huge write down in valuation. Amazon did eventually pay like a hundred million extra to keep their employees. So I don't know how much of an aqua hire this was, but they buy this sort of whittled down Zooks. And then I'm like, okay, this is making no sense. Like they invested in Aurora, they bought Zooks, they're investing in Rivian. Like how do all these puzzle pieces come together? And then in December, 25th, uh, December 15th, 2020, just a month ago, Zooks puts out this incredibly like official, extremely well done video with a four wheel bi-directional uh, autonomous or, you know, literally no driverless, no steering wheel, self-driving vehicle, which can go 75 miles an hour, apparently can last 16 hours on a single charge, has no manual controls. Um, they show all these cool people see sitting in it, you know, kind of like one of those early Waymo ads. Um, I gotta say they have these like green bucket seats that don't look too comfortable. And it's funny because you can tell it was built for ride sharing and robo taxis, but they clearly didn't think of that like in a COVID world where it can only be your pod. So that kind of, to me, cuts in half the use case for this type of vehicle in a huge way is if we all have to have masks, it's not really COVID friendly. But anyway, they put out this vehicle and they're talking about how Zooks is working uh, to imagine and reinvent a world-class autonomous ride hailing experience. Or that's what Jeff Wilkie said when Amazon bought the company in June. And they down they said they were going to operate Zooks as a standalone company and totally downplayed uh, the ability for Zooks to, to deliver packages autonomously. It was all about people. And so even though Amazon bought them and you thought they used the tech to deliver packages, they're like, no, we're going to keep Zooks as its own thing apparently they're pushing forward like crazy for their own robo taxi service. So now I'm like, okay, Amazon owns Zooks. Zooks is launching this robo taxi service. We don't know when, but they've unveiled this vehicle. It's driving around San Francisco doing test rides. I mean, it looks like they're just in the face of running more data through that system, making it safer, convincing regulators. I'm not sure. It was very unclear in this presentation, like how far along they were from actually getting this into the hands of consumers. And for you being able to like download the Zooks app and get a ride from autonomous Zooks, like we don't know when that'll happen, but they're hyping this up six months after Amazon bought them. So I don't know, putting this all together, um, I think Amazon, you know, they're not just the packages company. They tried to launch the phone. They're doing Alexa. I'm doing all these smart devices. Like I think Amazon is always trying to position itself at the forefront of technology and they see the next trillion dollar opportunity and platform is the robo taxi, the autonomous electric vehicle that Tesla is in a massively leadership position um, in, in creating and bringing to market. You know, that's why Apple's looking to expand in this category because Apple, multi-trillion dollar company, how can we grow? What is the next rate computing, computing platform? Uh, it is the car. Software is eating the world. Software is not really Really eating the car unless you own a Tesla. And so that's why all these big tech companies are saying once these cars go autonomous, they're like a smartphone with wheels that can have even more apps built on top of them than the current computers we have. You know, they're going to be doing stuff, people, food, um, delivering packages. Who knows what type of software applications will get built on top of these robo taxi networks, but we do know there'll be the way that all people and stuff move around. And this alone is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. And so when you think about Amazon, um, you know, Amazon is 
in, in perhaps the most incentivized company to try and solve this problem because they literally have 40 billion worth of shipping costs last year that they could cut in half or less if they went autonomous and electric. Immediately right there, you have a $20 billion incentive. I mean, that's why they're throwing so billions, a billion point two at Zooks, 400 million at Rivian, um, because they have such a big incentive and friction on their business and just need to solve this problem. And on top of that, I think this all comes back to that, um, you know, Amazon has an existing business to subsidize this data collection. So what I think they're going to do is, and slowly this is going to start happening. I'm sure we'll start seeing it in the wild. So they're going to start slapping more and more sensors on these delivery vans. Like I'm sure the Rivian delivery vans are going to be loaded with sensors. I actually made a video on the autonomous strategy of Rivian itself, because when I was at the uh, fully charged show in Austin, I was up close with the Rivian, looking at all their LiDAR and their sensors. I think they have like 10 cameras, four radar. They even have LiDAR. They have like way bigger of a, of a sensor suite than the Tesla did, but they had all these sensors on them and they're going to start collecting data and start, you know, having over the air software updates and slowly improving their internal self-driving technology from there. And I was like, okay, well, this is the only company that's actually doing the Tesla strategy that I think has a shot at working. Um, and then you subsidize that with saying, well, okay, how are we going to get a hundred thousand Rivians on the road to get enough data? Well, Amazon's like, we'll buy them and they're not going to look like Rivian trucks. They're going to look like delivery vans. And so Amazon gets a hundred thousand of these electric delivery vans with sensors they slapped on them. They drive around the cities with drivers who are all training that neural net. And then Amazon essentially has a fleet that's subsidized by their shipping business to develop their self-driving technology. So to me, this is exactly the move I see them doing, slowly putting the pieces together. And over time, you know, right now it's people driving gas cars, but over time they're going to be slowly built by Rivian. And then we're going to slowly take out the driver. And then Amazon is going to try and push for this electric autonomous uh, vision to be the backbone of their logistics network. And so... um. Anyway, this is, and, and even and even still as like something food for thought at the end of this is it's not just packages. It's, they really do want to move around people, it sounds like, because Zooks, they are pushing and they want to go to market as its own brand, as its own robo-taxi thing. So that to me is even more interesting. It's not just to cut down on their own shipping costs. Amazon actually isn't just playing defense here. They're playing offense. They want to be a winner. They want to be a leader in this space. And they think Zooks, this kind of shared mobility, uh, four-person sitting, all facing each other vehicle form factor is going to be what a robo-taxi look like. So that's something interesting to think about with Tesla is they dropped the Model B, the sort of mini high urban density bus unit. Then they did the loop with the boring company that kind of is that. But Tesla has missing in its vehicle lineup a minivan. Um, they have missing this sort of front facing, no driver autonomous micro bus thing that every other self-driving company seems to have. So I don't know. I have a lot more questions than answers here, um, but, I, but I just keep... The breadcrumb keep leaking. It just seems like with each piece of news that comes out, Amazon's investment and focus on this autonomous EV gets bigger and bigger. So as much as I think Apple was in the news and Waymo's in the news, I really see the true battle of the next century becoming Amazon versus Tesla. Or, or when I think about, you know, as a Tesla investor, obviously I'm biased. I think Tesla with a million cars on the road, billions of miles of data already, um, already with the best battery technology may already be like way too hard to catch. Like they're already, in my opinion, the runaway leader in both electric with the batteries and autonomous with the full self-driving chip and the neural net and the fleet. So I, I appreciate that Amazon's trying to do that. And I think they are like in the best position to copy Tesla if anyone's going to do it. They'll probably get there five years later because this battery tech and the self-driving tech will get commoditized to the point where anybody can do it. Um, and I think there's going to be huge value in whoever does it as a number two. I mean, this is, it's almost like, I can't think of a bigger monopoly in the world than having a fully autonomous electric car that can drive around cities when no one else does. That's literally going to be the biggest competitive advantage, moat, whatever you want to call it, that any company has. And Tesla's going to have it for years. And then it's going to be a question of who's going to come in next. How does that all play out? And I think Amazon is five years behind Tesla, but that's five years ahead of anyone else, um, in my opinion, because they already have the puzzle pieces to have, you know, tens of thousands of these cars collecting data and so forth. So we also just got news that Rivian raised another investment round. Um, I, I just can't believe Rivian's raised like $8 billion. They're probably worth like $20 billion. They haven't delivered a single car yet. I mean, they have this Amazon partnership, but to me, this is getting just insane. Like I feel like so much hype and pressure has been put on Rivian right now for them to actually deliver. Like I just can't wait to see um, how this all happens. For a while, I've said that Amazon should buy Rivian. Um, I actually think that Rivian's like too expensive now for Amazon to want to buy them. And they're, Amazon's in a really strategic place right now of letting Rivian pre prove um, that they can execute before, you know, with that $400 million and just being a big customer before buying them out, they want to see if they can actually do it. And so I think that's kind of a genius move by Amazon. They're not really convinced that Rivian's the one yet. So they're going to wait and see if they can actually build this, you know, delivery van to market. And if that works, then maybe they'll buy them. But 
Um, I don't know. I think this is this is going to be epic. And, you know, the Tesla network, we're getting closer and closer to the launch of Tesla's autonomous robo-taxi network because, um, you know, we have the FSD beta program, the question of will we let the Tesla network operate and get up and running with human drivers first? If so, it sounds like that could be, you know, right around the corner. And so, so much is about to happen here. Um, you know, we're just get we're, the robo taxi wars are just heating up, and I cannot wait to watch this for years to come because the the electric robo taxi built for twenty five or thirty grand that drives around our cities is is a trillion dollar opportunity potentially, and it's why everybody in big tech is chasing it. Tesla's five years ahead. Bezos is you know trying to copycat Elon Musk. What else is new? This is hyper change. Would love to know what you think in the comments below about this scheme. Amazon's autonomy strategy. Do you think I'm right on the right track here? What do you think? Are they scheming? Is there any other breadcrumbs I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers. See y'all next time. Peace.